Hello everybody, my name is Ryan, uh, PM from the Dataverse team, and I also have Kim with me today from our Power BI team, and we're going to be talking about how you can turbocharge Dynamics 365 with the Power Platform. For today's agenda, we're going to start by talking about how you can unblock bottlenecks with adaptive business processes. We're going to talk about how Microsoft's Intelligent Cloud can be your solution to do so. We'll discuss how that combines best-of-breed technologies to make this happen, and we'll demonstrate the digital solutions that we have that address the modern challenges that you face as you operate your business today. And so if we look at modern business, it has modern bottlenecks. Especially in today's world, we see that businesses are straining to grow. Business continues to grow, especially in light of changing dynamics because of the pandemic, but our systems may not necessarily be able to keep up. We see that we deal with and struggle with disconnected systems, where 54% of our organizations struggle with process integration issues as well as system integration issues. We see that businesses struggle to report, analyze, and gain insights from their data, and that half of companies feel that it is difficult to create and configure the reports that they use to operate their business on a day-to-day -day basis. And then finally, we see that our customers are struggling with outdated and legacy systems, with half of our customers looking to replace outdated hardware and software to improve business performance, as well as provide their end users with the modern experiences that they expect in today's mobile-first, cloud-first world. Now, these bottlenecks come in many, many forms. In many cases we see around the globe, there's a lack of developer expertise, where there simply aren't enough professional developers to go around to meet the needs of building all these applications. We see that there are time and resource constraints and that there's always more applications to build, more reports to author, more workflows to create than we have time or resources. We see that data resides in silos and it is difficult for us to stitch that data together to give us a view of what's going on in our businesses and create end-to-end -end business processes with high fidelity for our data. We struggle with budget constraints where we may not be able to afford to modernize those business processes. And of course, we also have the sheer complexity of the processes that our businesses run on a day-to-day -day basis. We see that we have incompatibility across our applications as well as a lack of actionable insights. We struggle to sometimes govern shadow IT where well-meaning individuals may build or create applications workflows or reports, but that ultimately are not sanctioned or visible by central IT. We see that legacy technology inhibits innovation. And then finally, we see that it's often difficult to innovate while ensuring that you're able to provide the security and compliance that you need to meet your company's objectives. And so, we would encourage you to let Microsoft's Intelligent Cloud be your solution. Let's take a little bit of a look at what this might look like. And so, if we think about modern business processes and what we are doing as companies, we see that we are spanning multiple business processes. We see that we are trying to transform products to better meet the needs of our customers. We see that we are trying to optimize operations so that we are able to operate our processes efficiently. We are looking to empower our employees, our people, to do more while simultaneously engaging customers. And these four different business processes are not siloed. We see that data is central to how we interconnect these business processes because I sell products to my customers. I empower my employees to work with and engage with those customers. And I use all of this data to operate my business as well as optimize it. And so with Dynamics 365, we feel that we are providing the world's connected AI business cloud, where from sales to human resources to finance and operations to commerce, service, and marketing, we are providing an end-to-end -end suite of business applications. And these are all built on top of the Power Platform, where I am able to leverage Power BI to analyze my data to gain new insights, where I'm using Power Apps to build compelling experiences for both the desktop as well as mobile devices to take action and to interact with my data, 
using Power Automate to automate against my data, and then using Power Virtual Agents to chat with or interact with my data. Now, this is all built over the top of a common platform substrate, which includes things such as data connectors, which allow me to connect to over 400 different data sources, both in the cloud as well as on-premises. This includes AI Builder, which allows me to add intelligence to any of my existing business applications. And this includes Dataverse, which is how we allow you to store data within the Power Platform, as well as to connect to external virtualized data. But that's enough talk about these different things. What I would now like to do is show you an experience where we have digitized the returns business process from the customer to the warehouse to the analyst. And so let's take a look at what that looks like. And so what I have here is our Dynamics 365 for commerce experience. You'll see that customers can browse the product catalog, they can find products that they are interested in, they can order them, so on and so forth, that is then processed through our Dynamics 365 applications for fulfillment. Additionally, customers can sign into this experience as well. And so I'm now going to sign in as Claudia. And so you'll see I'm now logged in. Now, let's assume for a moment that Claudia wanted to return the coffee machine that she had ordered. What we have done is we have extended the Dynamics 365 for Commerce experience through an embedded Power Virtual Agent. And so I, as Claudia, will now be able to interact with Contoso Coffee to return my coffee machine. So I will type, I'd like to return something. And so Power Virtual Agents is able to understand the intent of that message. And so because I am logged in as Claudia, Power Virtual Agent will be able to go to Dataverse and be able to retrieve, using Power Automate as the glue, the orders that Claudia has placed. You'll see that Claudia has placed two orders, and so I will select the first one. Now what will happen is the bot will use that information to retrieve what items were available in that order. And we can see that Claudia has ordered quite a few things, and so Claudia is going to return the Barista Home device today. That was that really fancy espresso machine that we looked at earlier. And so Power Virtual Agent will now prompt me, once again, embedded within the Dynamics 365 for Commerce experience, why I'd like to return this, or why Claudia would like to return this. I'll select No Longer Needed, and I'll just say, uh, just don't need it. Power Virtual Agent will capture that information. It will ask me whether I'd like to refund or re exchange this item. And then finally, once I've done that, it will prompt me with an adaptive card and it will send me an email with a return authorization slip, which I can include when I mail back this espresso machine. So now let's take a look at how we built our Power Virtual Agent. And so if we look at my Power Virtual Agent Maker screen, you'll see that we have a broad, broad set of topics. And so one of my favorite things to do when I am working on a bot is I actually turn on this track between topics capability, which will provide me with, as a maker, a great example of what it looks like for customers to interact with my bot. And so if I type return, here, very similarly to what I did earlier, what you'll see is it actually navigates to the returns topic that I created within Power Virtual Agent. You'll see that it hit the appropriate trigger phases, and now it's prompting information about the customer's first name, last name, email address, so on and so forth. Now, you may have noticed that earlier I didn't need to provide this information, right? It immediately went to the step where it was asking me about the products that I would like to return. The reason that Power Virtual Agent was able to do that was because it received the user context from Dynamics 365 for Commerce where we had embedded our Power Virtual Agent. And so you'll see I can look in near real time at which questions are being asked of the various, of the user. Now, down at the very bottom, what you'll see is we redirect to Contoso product returns. And so what this is doing is this is actually leveraging the power of the Azure Bot framework for more complex pro-dev-like interactions that you have in these complex scenarios. And so we are able to open this in 
the Bot Framework Composer. And so here you'll see I have a much richer, much more complex bot or conversation workflow. You'll see that we retrieve the order details and then we present the user with those order details, at which point they can select one of them. We then retrieve the products within each of those orders, once again prompting the user to select which product they would like to return. We then retrieve the list of accepted return reasons for that particular product. And then we proceed with the other various questions that you saw in the demonstration earlier uh, that allowed the user to complete the return. And so this shows end to end what it looks like for us to enable that return workflow through Power Virtual Agent, but embedded in our Dynamics 365 for Commerce experience. And so now that Claudia has initiated her product return through Power Virtual Agent embedded in Dynamics 365 Commerce, Charles is now going to process that return through a Power App running on his mobile device. You can see here that he is able to handle return orders and he is presented with a list of orders or returns to process. Now this information is being pulled from Dataverse, and so if I open this particular item, you'll be able to see all of the information about the return that Claudia entered through her interactions with the bot earlier. I can go in and I can state that this has arrived at the warehouse, move to the next step. I am now going to scan the barcode that Claudia was provided in her RMA documentation. We'll see that that barcode is processed. I will now use AI Builder embedded in my application to determine that yes, in fact, Claudia did return her barista home machine. And so now we see that once again, we have the right RMA and we have the right product. I can specify that the product status is okay. I can proceed to the next step in this process. I can authorize the full return refund value, and I can finish my return assessment. And so through this experience, within my Power App, I was able to interact with the return data created through Power Virtual Agent that was stored in Dataverse that already supports my Dynamics 365 applications. I was able to use a mobile Power App complete with barcode scanner as well as embedded AI builder object detection to determine that the right products were in fact returned. And I was able to process that return, storing all the relevant information back into Dataverse. So now let's take a look at how we built the application that Charles used to process the return. Here we can see within my Power Apps Maker Portal a list of interconnected applications that I've built, all which work over the common data that is stored within Dataverse. We were using the Contoso Retail Warehouse app, and so we'll go through and we'll edit that application. Now I've already pulled that up here. You can see that I have loading screens. You can see that return order gallery that we used earlier to see all of the different returns that need to be processed. And we can go down and even see the object detection screen that we used to identify that the coffee machine that was returned was in fact the barista home make and model. Now it's super, super easy to build these mobile applications. For example, if I wanted to go in and change this particular icon because it's, it's acting as a back button, so maybe I'd like to uh, make it a back button icon instead, I can change it just as simply as you just saw. So very, very simple, very, very easy to build mobile first applications, but that are interacting with and built over the top of your Dynamics data. In fact, if you'd like to see that, if I go to my data tab, you can see all of the different tables that we are using from Dataverse, formerly known as Common Data Service, as you see in the experience, that we're using to support this experience. So once again, super, super easy to build those mobile applications over the top of your common data 
that's generated by your Dynamics 365 applications. Now, this app doesn't live in a silo. As you saw earlier, we have many, many apps that work over the top of this data. And so similarly, if I go into my Dynamics 365 experience, you can see here one of the return orders that we talked about earlier, once again shown in the context of my Dynamics 365 for sales application. So once again, common data being generated from Power Virtual Agent embedded in Dynamics 365 for Commerce, being used in a mobile application to process returns, and then being shown natively within the Dynamics 365 for sales application for back office processes. And so now that we're able to see these returns within the context of our Dynamics 365 for sales application, what we can also do is unlock new insights by making it easy to analyze returns data within the context of our Dynamics 365 application. And so to show this, I'd like to hand things over to Kim. Kim, take it away. Thanks, Ryan. I'm going to start off here in Power BI Desktop, and we'll take a look at that same data that Ryan was processing earlier. So you can see here I have all my Contoso Coffees data, and we're looking at the returns. Um, and you can see we have over $31,000 worth of returns coming in, and a large number of units. And I can go ahead and slice and dice on this data. And behind the scenes, this is connected to Dataverse, and it's actually connected via direct query. That means that this data is coming in live and real time so that I can analyze this data as it's happening. So I can see Barista Home is one of the top products that's getting returned, um, and I can explore by different manufacturers to see which products are getting returned. I can go a step further with Power BI. Uh, we've infused AI capabilities throughout Power BI to make it really easy to do data analysis, even if you're not an expert. So I'm going to go ahead and add the Smart Narratives visual to my report. And what you'll see immediately, it auto-generates a text summary for what's going on on this page. So you can see it tells me that Barista Home had the highest amount, and it was over 4,000% higher than Columbia Medium Roast, which was the product with the lowest amount of returns. And this is a visual just like any other. So I can go ahead and format it. I can change the text color. Let's make that white. I can change the background and edit this description as I want. And now right in line, I can also take action on this data. So, you know, I see Barista Home is one of the top products with the highest returns. I can go ahead and click on this Power app and actually approve those returns right in line as I'm exploring this data. I can continue exploring uh, by taking a look at a tree view of this data. And so this is a decomposition tree, another AI visual in Power BI that allows me to figure out the breakdown of my data and understand what's causing uh, data to, to change and, and spike. So I'm going to go ahead and click on returns amount. And I see here that Barista Home is the top uh, product with the most returns. And I can see that defective item is actually the leading driver of those returns for this product. So when I click on that, I can see which vendors are driving those defective products. And now I know exactly who to call and have a conversation with about how to make uh, improvements to our process going forward. Now I'm going to switch back to Dynamics, where you can see I've embedded this Power BI report right in line, where I take all my other action and do all my other work. So this is amazing because not only was I able to explore that data myself, but I can publish it and share it with everybody else working in Dynamics, so they can get those insights as well. So you just saw how we were able to go from Dynamics Commerce processing returns on our website using Power Virtual Agents through to the back end where we used a Power App to process those returns, and then to Power BI where we were able to analyze and take action on that data. And this was all built on top of Dataverse. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to check out all the learning content and join our communities across the Power Platform. And be sure to check out the Business Applications launch event in April. Thank you so much for joining us, and we're really excited to see what you build with the Power Platform.